Does vitamin D supplementation help with Hashimoto's, like your antibody levels, TSA, free T4, free T3? The answer is yes, it does, but hold on. <laughs> There's a lot more information you need to know about that, so let's get into it. So Hashimoto's is kind of the under an umbrella of autoimmune thyroid disease. And there's basically two conditions under that. There's Hashimoto's and there's Graves. We're not really gonna talk about Graves today. Uh, Hashimoto's is a condition that, you know, the pathology and like exactly how it happens isn't completely understood, but basically your immune system becomes unregulated. And T cells and B cells, which are part of your immune system, infiltrate your thyroid gland uh, and they blow up these cells called follicular cells. And it, over time, you can't make enough T4 and so you become hypothyroid. Now, what causes it? How do you get there? Well, <clears throat> it's basically this immune system uh, regulation, uh, deregulation uh, that is kind of mediated by both uh, genetic factors and environmental factors. So there's basically two kinds of Hashimoto's you can have. <clears throat> there's a genetic, like a high genetic predisposition kind of Hashimoto's where like, you know, lots of people in your family have it or lots of other people in your family have different autoimmune conditions. And then there's kind of a, what I call an acquired Hashimoto's, which you don't have to have a genetic predisposition for. It primarily happens through what we call cross reaction from an infection you might have had or some sort of toxin you've been exposed to, sometimes foods. And so that's essentially uh, the basics of Hashimoto's. Of course, I have a lot of different uh, I have a lot of different videos on Hashimoto's, you guys know. So what is it as it relates to vitamin D? Well, we've known for a long time that people with hypothyroidism uh, have low levels of vitamin D. Now, notice what I said there, right? I said people with hypothyroidism. You gotta remember that Hashimoto's is the number one cause of hypothyroidism, uh, basically anywhere where there's enough iodine in the diet, which is essentially you know, the US and Europe. That's the number one cause, nine out of 10 people with hypothyroidism have Hashimoto's. Now, you may not have been tested for it. Uh, you may not have been treated like you have it, uh, but that's what causes it. And we've known for a long time that people with Hashimoto's have low vitamin D. In fact, there's a couple of real recent studies I'll kind of pull from today, and I'll give you uh, uh, citations down below that just kind of confirm how important vitamin D is. So they did this thing called a Mendelian randomization study, and I'm not even going to explain what that is, but the, the results are is they found that higher levels of vitamin D are associated with the reduced risk of Hashimoto's. Okay, that sounds cool. They also, their findings suggested that supplementing with vitamin D uh, can be valuable for preventing Hashimoto's and treating Hashimoto's. Very important, right? And of course, it may mitigate the risk and the prognosis of your Hashimoto. So we already know that there's a lot of information out there. This is really recent information. Uh, and there was another recent, what we call a systematic review and meta-analysis where someone looks at hundreds of different studies and looks for good quality evidence and then, you know, makes some conclusions about it. And basically what they found is they looked, they were able to look at 12 different studies that looked at Hashimoto's patients in particular, and they found that vitamin D supplementation in Hashimoto's patients does the following. Number one, reduces your thyroid peroxidase antibodies, reduces your thyroglobulin antibodies, decreases your TSH, which is a good thing because if you're hypothyroid, your TSH levels increase, right? I also found that vitamin D supplementation increases your free T3 and your free T4, which are the final free amounts of thyroid hormones that your tissues get exposed to. Let's just take a quick, just quick review of that, right? Thyroid peroxidase antibodies and thyroglobulin antibodies, those are the antibodies that you have if you have Hashimoto's. Now you can have one or the other or both. You should always get tested for both, okay? I know some doctors don't think that thyroglobulin antibodies are that big of a deal, uh, but they are, okay? So you need to make sure you get tested for both of those things and vitamin D supplementation can lower those antibodies. Now that brings up a good point, okay? Do antibody levels being lower correlate with how you feel? The answer is no, they don't. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time and I can tell you that I've had people with extremely high antibodies that didn't feel anything. I've had people with antibodies that were like 55 that felt terrible. So the antibody levels don't correlate with how you feel even though vitamin D supplementation can lower those antibodies and we do want them as low as we can get them. Why? Because thyroid antibodies can cross react. They can attach to things that aren't thyroid peroxidase and thyroid globulin. They can attach to your cerebellum, they can attach to the parietal cells in your stomach. Uh, and so we don't want your autoimmune problem to expand. So we want the antibody levels as low as we can get them, but just because they are lower doesn't mean uh, you feel better. I hope that makes sense. So everyone always wants to know the following, how much vitamin D should I take? Well, I can't tell you because it depends on what your baseline level of vitamin D 
is, right? So that means you got to get tested. Uh, and that brings up the bigger issue is, I'm just going to tell you now, uh, you really shouldn't be trying to treat your Hashimoto's by yourself. First off, if you know you have it uh, and you're having symptoms that still make you, you look like you're hypothyroid, like hair loss and weight gain and depression and anxiety and brain fog and I may have said that twice, uh, muscle and joint pain, that kind of stuff. I think you really ought to be working with someone that understands all these issues we're talking about here today rather than trying to do it yourself because you're not trained. It's not fair for you to try to do it to yourself. So how much vitamin D should you take? It depends on your baseline. I have a very specific formula I use based on where someone's vitamin D is. Is it less than 30? Uh, is it less than 20? Is it 40? Right? And that brings up another good point. Uh, how high should my vitamin D be? Again, I don't know you, but I can say that most of my autoimmune patients, I want them 70 to 80 to 90. And that's not high. That's not like a high toxic level. Uh, 30, 32, in my experience, that's not a good level of vitamin D. It may be within the reference range, uh, but I don't think it's a good level. I don't think it's a good optimal level. So if you're taking vitamin D, people ask, well, then when should I retest? Well, again, that depends on your baseline and how much you're taking. And really, you ought to be working with someone who can monitor that for you. Can you take too much vitamin D? Absolutely. You bet you can. Vitamin D is, is really not a vitamin. It's more of a neurosteroid. Uh, and it is fat soluble, so it can store in your liver. You absolutely can take too much. Have I personally seen vitamin D toxicity in the last 20 years? No. Have I had people taking a lot of vitamin D? Yes. But again, we monitor people. Now, I don't know what someone's doing who's trying to treat themselves. I think it's very easy to OD on it uh, if you don't know this stuff I'm telling you. So the other thing I need to tell you is, yes, vitamin D is great. I use it all the time in Hashimoto's patients. Uh, it can lower TPO antibodies and, and help the thyroid numbers look better, but it is one part of a strategy of a treatment plan. Uh, and again, if you're trying to treat yourself and all you're doing is vitamin D, that's one thing you're doing, right? For me and how I approach these things, there's so much more that could be involved. For example, uh, gastrointestinal and liver problems, uh, glucose handling, HPA problems, insulin resistance, mitochondrial problems, making ATP, red blood cells, anemias, B12 folic acid, iron, right? That's a lot of stuff. And then last thing that could be involved that is a very big piece for any Hashimoto's case is the person's immunophenotype. Now, what is that? Well, that is what is your immune system fingerprint. So again, Hashimoto's, you know, a lot of people have, it's the most common organ specific autoimmune disease, most common cause of hypothyroidism. But if you give me a hundred people with Hashimoto's, even if they all have TPO antibodies, even if they're all taking levothyroxine, they're all going to have their own immune system fingerprint. And I'll put an example of the test we do here. It's called comprehensive lymphocyte immunophenotyping. It is really important <laughs> to know what is your immunophenotype. What does it look like, right? Phenotype just is a word that means what something looks like. Because it is your TH1 high or your TH1 low? Is your TH2 high? I mean, is your CD4 high, CD8? Doing that test allows us to drill down and find out for a particular person what is their flavor of Hashimoto's, not just doing some cookie cutter, everybody gets vitamin D and that's it, right? Or everybody gets this, everybody gets that. You want to take the time and find a doctor that can be a detective, take the time, knows what test to order, right? Remember all those factors I just talked about, gastrointestinal and liver and blood sugar and HPA, right? Someone that understands all of that. Because if you don't, uh, and you try to do it yourself, it's really way too easy to, at best, waste a lot of time and money if you're doing it or you're working with someone who doesn't understand this stuff, or at worst, screw yourself up permanently, right? So, does vitamin D help? Yes. Should you be doing it yourself? I don't think so. <laughs> you should be working with someone that understands all these complex topics we talked about, right? right? So I hope that helps, uh, and I'll see you next time.